word and applying the word. And it got to where he'd only go like twice a year. And he said, well, Brother Ricky, he said, you know, I should never go. And I said, yeah, but, but brother, let me ask you this. How many times did you used to have to go? He said, oh, on average, five, six times every year I'd go into the hospital. I said, how many times you been going now? He said, oh, a couple. I said, brother, you got to increase. You are getting a crop. See, when people, how many know Jesus, he didn't say that it's either got to be either 30, it's got to be either 60, or it's got to be 100. He did not say that. There's always one, two, three, four, five, and through all the letters before you get to 60. You can get a 5% off of the word, and that's still considered a harvest. Amen. You can get a 20% increase, that's still a harvest. You can get a 40, that's still a harvest. You can get a 60, that's still a harvest. The thing I want you to see is, no matter how much you're getting back off of the word that you're looking at, don't be frustrated that you're not getting the hundred yet, but be thankful you're getting the harvest. But don't be satisfied to just stay there. Be willing to keep growing. Amen. That's what Jesus really wants us to see. Now, so then he says after that, verse 20, he says, uh, that hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit. Some, and if y'all want to, you can read it with me. Some what? 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. So I mean, no, there's a whole lot of others between just those three, right? So if you used to have trouble uh, with your temper and you've really studied how love acts and different things and, and things along that line, and you just get mad every once in a while. How many know? Don't be frustrated you still yield to your flesh and get mad every once in a while. Be thankful you don't get mad every day. Amen. How many know you're getting a crop? Yes. You're getting a crop, man. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. And so by doing that, by being thankful you're getting a crop, you're at least valuing the word that you do have then God can value you or honor you and help you with more. And by doing so, usually it's a little revelation that he'll tell the Holy, a little nugget, and he'll reveal it to you from the Word, and you'll be like, oh, that's why that keeps happening. And now you're getting a bigger crop. Yes. Now, after verse 20, I want you to look, because this is what Jesus is talking about, verse 21, and he said... Unto them. Now, he just got through with 30, 60, 100 fold. So we're getting harvest from the word, the incorruptible seed. But then he, he doesn't change the subject. Verse 21, he says, what's he ask? Put it under a basket. Yeah. Or a bed. Yeah. King James says, uh, would you light a candle and hide it under the bed? Yeah. He did not change subjects. He's still talking about increase from the word or harvest or revelation. Yeah. So he just talked about 30, 60, and 100. He told us first how the enemy works to try to rob the seed because if the seed stays and you hear it and continue to do it, meditate on it, mutter it, how many know you're going to start getting a crop off of it? So the enemy's after to get the seed out of your heart, right? That's why you go to a service and you hear a message on faith, how, how to operate in a God kind of faith or how to walk in love. And then before you get out of the parking lot, you're, you're tempted to have a fight with your spouse before you get to the, the old depot building. Are you with me? Amen. What's he after? He's after the seed that you just heard. He don't want to give it time to set and get watered and set in the good dirt because it's going to sprout and start producing a harvest. He's after it. But we're not ignorant of how the enemy operates. So Jesus said, then he goes through how to keep the word in you and how to give it time so that it starts sprouting, rooting, growing, producing harvest. Even if it's 10, it's still an increase. If it's 15, it's still an increase. If it's 20, it's still an increase. And then he said, nobody lights a candle or starts getting a harvest off of the word and then hides the revelation. See, this is dishonorable if what God took time to tell the Holy Ghost to reveal to you that has the ability to produce a harvest and then you hide it. 
or you don't value it. Okay? Anytime God tells the Holy Ghost to show you or me something, that ought to become incorporated into our life. That shows God we just cherished it. We count it valuable. We count it precious. So then he goes on to say, verse 21, for there uh, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel under a bed. But then he says, no, it should be set on a candlestick. In other words, Brother Hagin would tell all of us students, he'd say, walk in the light of the word you have. May I now say, walk in whatever the spirit of God has revealed to you from the word to you. Just walk in it. You know, if, if uh, like this one guy, he kept talking about that bronchitis. And I said, Brother Donnie, I said, don't be concerned about that. I said, Brother, you're getting a crop. He said, well, I, I want to get why I never have to go back. I said, if you will keep valuing everything God's already revealed to you, where you've, you hadn't had to go but three times, I mean two times, then as you value it, he's going to reveal more to you how this is getting in. And a day come when Brother Donnie has not been in the hospital now for eight years. Now he's walking in the hundred. But it took him quite a few years. But see, that's what, what I want you to begin to see in when we value what God values. When God takes time to tell the Spirit of God to reveal something to you, pull the cover back, like, thank you, God. I've never seen that that way before. And then all of a sudden, that has become valuable to you, and God will see to it that more honor is bestowed upon you or gave to you or revealed to you. People will begin to watch you and like, man, I remember when you used to be broke all the time, you used to be sick all the time, you used to have trouble with depression, and you, you're just free of that. You know what God just did? He honored you and shown to the community yes. how you're now living. Yes. That's awesome. yes. He'll honor you. Yes. He'll make your name great. Yes. He'll make your voice further. Yes. Amen. See, that's what he promised Abraham. All right, now, verse 22. In conjunction with the 30, 60, and 100, then hearing the word, receiving the word, doing the word, now we got revelation. It's a candle or light. Then he said, don't be concerned if there's other areas of your life that you haven't quite got figured out yet. There's nothing hidden that can't be made known if you will value what I've already revealed. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. How many of y'all are interested in, in becoming, uh, in, if I could say it this way, Brother Hagin would tell us, he says, in 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper, which means increase. So how many know prosperity is not just financial? It includes it, but how many know prosperity means increase? Yes. So if, if you've got a good marriage, but you're... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have a good marriage, but how I many know you're prospering, it can even become a better marriage. That's increase. Yes. If you walk in a certain degree of an anointing, but the anointing increases, how I many know that's prosperity? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So, so in those things, when, when you talk about prosperity, don't, thank you, Brother Greg, don't relate it to just money. It does include it, but tell somebody, say, increase. So then, thank you, sir. Third John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be where? In health. Now, this is what Brother Hagin would teach us. He said, guard against too much, how did he put it? Natural things concerning health because he said, I don't want to walk in natural health I desire to walk, do you remember how he would say it? Divine health. Divine. Divine is godly. Does that make sense? Healing belongs to the church and it belongs to the world. And we're grateful for it. 
But there is another place where a believer can walk and never be sick another day in their life. That is divine health. Don't be frustrated if you're not there yet, but know it's something you can reach for. But see, don't beat yourself up like, well, I just I don't have enough faith yet. No. Value these things that he's revealing now and be glad you're not as sick as much as you used to be. You're not as broke as you used to be. You're not as frustrated as you used to be. Are you with me? And God will keep revealing things. Are you with me? And these are the things, even though they could seem hid now, they won't be. Amen. Glory to God. Now, so then if, in verse 22, he says, For there is nothing hid which shall not be made what? Manifested or known. Now, one in the, the older Pentecostal circles I grew up in, you know, they'd preach and they'd be like, You better be careful. You know, your sins are going to find you out. You're going to hell, boy. Hell, hell. You know what I'm going to hell. <laughs> you can smell smoke, you know. Amen. <laughs> but... But I mean, no, I, I know it does apply. It says, you know, your sins will find you out. But I mean, no, that's really not. Jesus did not change subjects. He's talking about the seed being planted into a believer, talking about how the enemy comes to rob it, talking about increase off the seed. Then he talks about any light or revelation that God has took time to tell the Holy Ghost to reveal to you. Don't hide it, value it, cherish it, honor it. it. Then he said, don't be concerned about the things you haven't seen yet, because even though they're still hid, they will be manifest if you value what he has already revealed. Right? Yes. Amen. All right, now. So, hallelujah. It's already a living again. <laughs> hallelujah. Now, let's get to the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you would, go to Psalms 39, please. Psalms 39. Um, Brother Hagin's book, Understanding the Anointing. I, I didn't write down the page. I know it's in here. He talks about, okay, it's on page, if you would, write down page 140 and 41, 141. Page 140, 141. And it's, it's, mine's kind of tattered. I think it's got a blue cover. But it's called Understanding the Anointing. <laughs> but uh, page 140, he, at the bottom of the page, he says this, In September 1970, while my wife and I was in New York State, and the Lord instructed me to return to Tulsa, and hold a seminar. Our offices then were in Brother T.L. Osborne's old office building in North Utica. We had a little chapel in there that would seat about 300, so we'd hold a seminar now and then. He told me uh, to go back, close the meeting where he was, go back to Tulsa, and, and what to teach in every service. And so he said, and uh, this is what the Lord told him, and when you lay hands on people, that stronger anointing that has come on you, now listen to this statement, this is on page 149. That stronger anointing that has come on you four times in the last 20 years will come to abide. This will be a new beginning for you. Now, it's interesting that over a course of 20 years, I don't know if it's ever five, I don't know, it's just over a course of 20 years, four times, there was a very strong anointing that would come on Brother Hagin. And the Lord told him, he said, if you go back and do certain things, he said, this anointing that, now I'm going to just reference to something. What does Psalm say in reference to this? Oh, taste and see that what? Lord is good. Lord is good. It's interesting that very often God will give you glimpses and let you taste your future. We were 
conducting a meeting in Silsby, Texas, the first church we started back in 1988. And uh, we, were, we were having a special meeting and there were, I, don't, I think there were like eight other churches that were present from our community down on the Gulf Coast of Texas. And we were having a service and it was like the heavens open. And, and if you've ever seen that old movie with Clark Gable, Gone with the Wind, that staircase that goes up and does this. The heavens opened and I looked and there was this staircase. And it was this giant, and angels came and it wasn't a blue and it wasn't a, a white. They would, they would glitter and they would shine and then they had gold sashes and stuff. And they came uh, one on this side and one on this side and they're singing hallelujah and they come down and they come into our sanctuary and they just walk and line the wall we had a real long sanctuary and they're singing hallelujah and people from the Baptist Church Church of God Church of Christ assemblies started standing up and crying and they said we can't see them but we hear the angels singing hallelujah and it was phenomenal and they just kept singing and an anointing hit me and knocked me down and there were some other ministers present and they ran and they grabbed me and they picked me up and because I was trying to get up and they, they held me up and uh, one of my friends, he's like 6'4", he's, he's, he's a big guy and a fellow minister and he was on one side and a couple others and they were holding me and they would drag me. I couldn't walk. And so my feet are like this behind me and they're dragging me. And they dragged me over here and people just started running. And, and about 10, 12 feet away, they just fall like somebody hit them in the back of the head with two before. And they just stack up over there like cordwood. And they'd get about that deep, falling on each other. And then they'd drag me over here. And people start running and they just, poof, 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 and then they'd drag me over there. And, then, and after the service, I couldn't walk for a while. And I said, God, what was that? He said, that's your future. Because he said, you've bugged me about the miraculous and an anointing that'll drive cancer out and people that don't have arms, arms grow back and stuff. He said, it is in your future. But he said, I want to let you know, I can't release it right now because once I release it, I can't never take it back according to Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. Yeah. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable, can't be took back, can't change. I know what Job said, but Job didn't have revelation. Job had understanding for his day. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord took us away. That ain't true. Romans eleven twenty nine, New Testament says, God can't never take back. If God gave you something, it's yours. The enemy's come to steal it or else we just was ignorant and let it go. But God never takes it back. So he said, this is your future. And he said, I'm letting you taste it so that you will know toward the end of your life what you, uh, is going to be coming from the ministry. We've seen a little bit of it, but not like where we'll see. Yeah. But I'm still young. I'm 60-something, one, two, or three, somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I was born 57, so I'm, I don't know, <laughs> August. but <laughs> So somewhere in there. But we're still a young man, but we're finally getting to an age where God can trust us with some stuff. But in this, for you, I want you to know that God will let you taste your future. He'll give you glimpses of it. He'll give you taste of it. Most people never caught that, what Jesus said to Brother Hagin. He said, that's, that anointing you've tasted four times, last 20 years will come and abide. And it did. Now, Psalms 90, or 39, please. It, have you ever been in a service when you're like, dear God, I want to get that kind of service again? And stuff happens and things go on. A lot of times, it's your future. I'm not saying always. But a lot of times, God will let you taste of some stuff. Let you know what's ahead. Amen. Psalms 39. Uh... Verse 4, please. Psalms 39, 4. Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know 
how frail I am. Can we ask that? I believe so. It says so. So, can we ask God about our future? Absolutely. But no matter how much God reveals, how many know we still have to walk by faith? Not by sight. Now, one of the things that, that I want to just touch on before we go to the next thing is this. Would you agree with me? You never have to ask God about something He's already promised to you through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. How many know you never have to pray about is it God's will for somebody to be saved? That's right. It's God's will. You never have to pray about is it God's will for you to be healed? That's right. That's right. It's already been paid for. That's Are you with me? Amen. You never have to pray about God is it your will for me to be prosperous? That's right. Right? Because yep. I mean no, that's already been revealed. Yes. Okay? Yes. But things about ministry wise things like that it's okay to ask. Now Go with me, if you would, please, to Galatians 3, 9. Galatians 3, 9, please. I have learned in the, in the short 30-some years of ministry for us that there are certain things God will have you walk through. And if you've run with God very long, uh, He will tell you something and if, you, if you're like Mary and you say, how are we going to do it? He will give you instruction. But if it's like, how come? He'll never answer you. But when we're like Mary, and Mary said, when he said, you're going to be conceived and all this, she said, how will this happen since I am not married or I don't know a man? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he instructed her, but it wasn't like, I don't believe that. That's right. Or how come? Right. Yeah. So, when you ask God about certain things, he will tell you some things. And I have discovered too, like asking God about the ministry and other things we're going to do or, or things along this line. Even if I ask a question like that over there and he tells me something over here, I need to learn to be smart enough to know he's intelligent and I'm intelligent. And if I ask a question about that, but he's talking about something that's way over here in my life, I've got to learn to be smart enough. That undoubtedly is associated with that. Even though I'm not there yet, I'm still way over here. But he's getting me there. But this right now is related to me getting there. Now, in Galatians 3, 9, please. Glory to God. Um, <laughs> thank you, sir. So then they 